I'm sure you all know that I am a socialist. The joke has always been that I'm a militant hippie, which means I believe there's a need for a military. Scratching my nose again. I believe there's a need for a military. I believe in corporal punishment. I believe um, in that people need to have uh, consequences for their actions. I'm socialist, capitalist, which I know people say doesn't exist, but it does because we kind of live in that society now. That's what Democrats are, is socialist, capitalist. They don't like to say they're socialist, but socialist is for the people. Um, the actual definition, of course, of socialism is that the government is um, the controller of all things. So I'm not completely socialist. There are many things I don't think the government should be in control of. I don't think the government should be parenting children. I think parents should be parenting children. Even if parents are in a group, that's okay, but not, it should still be, you know, like two or three adults to, you know, some, a bunch of children, um, because I think you need that humanization rather than institutes. Institute raising has already proven not to be okay. All right, so uh, that being said, how I would change the world if I was the goddess that you know of the world how would I do it well first of all it'd be a global government which everybody dislikes but you'd have a council of people and um, then you would it would come down you know like so you'd have a council of people govern the world stuff and then you would have nations so you'd have you still have a president or king or queen or governor or Whoever you wanted. I've got a hair thing going on because it's stuck in my my head. Um, sorry, this is bugging me. I can't I can't have that. It's either out or in, but not. Uh, that's better because we have to play with my hair while I do a vlog for some reason. <laughs> I brushed my hair, but it's not looking really good. All right, so and then um, you'd go down into states or cities if your nation was you know small and or tribes if that's the case that you wanted to do some of the things that i think that are necessary that we don't we don't necessarily do is that everyone should be fed everyone should have a place to live and everyone should have the rights to certain things like internet now because internet you need for a lot of things you need it for school you need it for work you need it you know everyone should be allowed to get internet everybody should have a phone um, everybody should have some form of transportation. If not a car, then there sh the city should provide transportation. We do that, but not at cost to the people. Everybody be like, oh, well, how would we make money at this? There are ways to make money at this. Um, again, because you are, because government is an institute, things don't change very quickly. And so even our government in the United States has not changed um, to move with the times as much. I mean, they have in some cases, but they have in other cases. So free public transportation should be an automatic plus, and it should be better transportation. So there was a um, proposal that went through in California to create, and they've been talking about this for a long time, but have yet to do it. And it, it doesn't make any sense to me why they don't, but, you know, I mean, I know what they're saying logically, but I think those are just arguments. And again, it always comes down to money. Um, but it was to go from border to border. So from the Canada border all the way to the Mexican border. So that people in Northern California would be able to work in Southern California and take a bullet train like they do in Japan. Um, anyway, so a bullet train. And then I think that should just be across the whole world the whole world should have a transportation that runs everywhere um that's just me again and there are going to people argue this and there will be things about money and money is another thing so the money cap would be a you know be a million dollars cost of living would not go up just because people are making more money um and I get why sometimes that works. I understand the economics of it, okay? It's not that I'm stupid, but I understand the economics. But I would have my own type of currency, and most of that currency would be, you know, of course, would create... If you have a world government, you'd create a world currency. 
Um, I know people say, oh, it'd never work. Maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't work. But I would, that's how I would change the world. Medicine would be available for free. Now, how would people make money, though, you say? Okay, so how people make money is body surgery wouldn't be free. That would be considered extra cosmetic stuff. So you'd pay for that. Well, how would a person become a cosmetic surgeon? Well, there's need for cosmetic surgeons. There are people who've been in fires and things like that that need it that aren't. It's not about changing the way you look for beauty. So what you would have to do in this world that I would create is the things that are needed are free and the things that are not needed are going to cost money. And they're going to cost more money than, you know, how they are now. Because that would be the specialty. You know, you'd have to be a specialist so you would be able to charge whatever you wanted. Uh, there'd be a cap. I'd say a million dollars, but, you know, a billion dollars is fine. You hit a billion dollars and all your money, and that's corporations, people, governments. Once you hit that other rest of that money, all that extra money goes back into either the business and or goes back into the people you, who are working for you and or... Uh, go to pe help the services that we need. So an example is, let's pick somebody nobody likes. Um, CEO nobody likes. Um, I guess we'll say Google. So Google CEO would only make the top percentage of money that he could make would be based on what his company could make for him and then everything else would filter back into the company to play the, pay the employees so that everyone had a good wage. Now you're saying though that if all these things were free, like so if your food was free and your transportation was free and your telephone was free, it's just base stuff. It's not like you wouldn't you wouldn't be you wouldn't have the best cell phone. You just have a cell phone that works well. Um and then those services could charge for extras for a car like say so let's say you had a basic cell phone. And it didn't, it didn't go on the internet. It was just for phone calling. Then the package to pay for this, which they already do to a degree, then you would pay for those extra pieces. That's where the money would come. Internet would be free. Everyone would be able to have internet. It would be the modems and the routers and the things like that would be more expensive of how you want to use it. Computers wouldn't technically be free, but they would be, there would be a base one that was cheaper and then all the extra stuff. Which is, and that's really how it is now. But there's no guarantee for the people that are at the bottom of the ladder to get the stuff they need to be successful in life. Um, and there's too many people at the top of the ladder that have excess. I mean, what are you going to do with all that money? If you're not, fill, if you're not, I mean, if you're a billionaire and you are, have all your needs are met, what are you doing with all the extra stuff? And your needs can be a little more than the needs of the average person. But still, what are you doing beyond that? Um, I, I remember having, watching a documentary of a guy who was, I can't remember who it was, who was putting in his, in his basement, he had a bowling alley, a movie theater, and a pool area for his friends to come over and hang out. And somebody it made a complaint to him that, you know, there were people starving. Why didn't you take that money and put it in? He said, I need this stuff. Okay, sure, you could pay for those stuff, and that, that that's what keeps the economy going. But then you could take the extra stuff, and instead of building, like, five homes everywhere, you could take that. It's, it's a, a thought process, you know. It's, I'm rich, so therefore I'm going to spend all my money on me. But instead, it could be, I'm rich, and I'm going to make sure I help other people. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to help them get rich. You're just going to help make their lives more comfortable. Like, um, there are people out there who do not have eyeglasses. Uh, they can't afford them. It's very pricey for eyeglasses. Let's we'll see. I went to get... Now, there are online sites, but if you don't have the internet, you can't really get eyeglasses online. Um... But let's, let's just do an average. So it's $40 to get my eyes checked, right? I think it was maybe a little more. Between $40 and $50 to get my eyes checked. $40 and $50 in the United States can be used a whole lot of different ways in a base. When you're talking about you don't have a whole lot of money to begin with, okay? 
Um, and then on top of that, you got to get the eyeglasses. And like I said, if you don't have the internet, you can't be ordering them online. If you don't have a credit card, you can't order the stuff online. Um, nowadays you have a PayPal, but you still have to hook up the PayPal to either your bank. If you don't, and a lot of people who are low income do not have, their money does not go in a bank. They just cash their check and then spend it from there. Some people like me, I have a prepaid card, um, that I got. I really like it, um, because I can put credit cards for my son and down the road, maybe my grandson on the side and put money on it and they can spend money. Um, it's called FAMZU. It's a really, really great, easy pre preloading um, MasterCard. Uh, so, but some people can't do that. They don't have the access to the internet, sign up for the stuff. So, when you think about why do I want to change the world so everybody has stuff? Because I remember not having stuff. I remember growing up, I grew up in an upper middle class family and we had lots of stuff of that time period. Um, we didn't have a pool in our backyard. That yeah, was one of the things my mom, my dad wanted, my mom didn't want because she's afraid us kids would drown ourselves. But we had a huge backyard. We, our, our lot was three fourths of an acre. You know, we had a very modest little three bedroom home with a garage and a carport. Um, we, you know, we had fruit trees in our backyard, so that's had fresh fruit. We had, um, my mom would do a garden sometimes. My grandmother, on the other hand, always did a garden. And she lived on a little smaller of a lot than we did. But she also had, you know, a garden and stuff like that. So, you know, the thing is, is that you look at time eras and you look at now. There are so many people that live in the city who do not have the ability to do some of the better stuff. And they live in the city so they can work, so they can make money. And then you have people that live further out in rural areas and um, urban areas. And they kind of have... They can, like, have a garden, which is good. And then, you know, here in Oregon, they teach you how to have gardens inside of apartments, which is really cool. I mean, I've done that in the past. Um, one of the ones I like is they uh, have um, aquariums, and they show you how to, on top of your aquarium, to do your tomatoes and, you know, various peppers and things like that. You can grow them out. But to get back to the idea of changing the world, that's another thing, is that gardens would be available like they are in um, places I've been. Community gardens, big, huge community gardens to help pay for things. Um, I just think that human civilization has grown very quickly in certain aspects, but yet not quick enough in other aspects from the industrial age. And I don't think that we have thought about you know, how we take care of our neighbors. It always intrigues me that the Christian religion and many other religions talks about helping and um, taking care of and being there for those around you. Um, I, I have some Christian friends that say that's anybody, and I have other Christian friends that say it's only Christians. But still, if you've got these billionaires who are Christians, um, are they, you know, some billionaires are doing really great stuff. Others, you know, aren't. Some p movie stars are doing absolutely beautiful stuff. People out there uh, who want to change the world are trying to do great things to help change the world. But I think that um, it's something where all of us have to kind of agree upon. In socialism, people are very afraid of socialism. And, and, it, and for a good reason, because most socialist countries turn to dictatorship and tyrants. Um, I think that I'd like a council, but you have, you, there's no way to, and this is the realistic part of it, there is no way to keep corruption out of institutes. I mean, there's corruption within family units, and there's corruptions within p partner people. Uh, humans have always wanted to do things either for power, for money, um, power and money, to be in control of things because somebody else didn't do a good job when they were in control of things. And that is, that's a na natural thing. So it would be hard to change the world totally the way I want to do it. It had to take a, some natural disaster, you know, catastrophic, apocalyptic structure, and then rebuild it from the ground up with the idea of putting a council in 
you would, um, I would want a council and I would want young people on it. And I know a lot of people get really, you know, whacked about that. Um, but I don't think age says you necessarily have great experience or knowledge because there's people in the United States whose age should by, by just by how old they are, be able to give them great insight. Instead, all they do is fondly wish for the time when they were younger or whatever because they remember that as being a good time for most people. I don't, as a child, I didn't really enjoy being a child. Um, I prefer now, even with some things going on I don't agree with, I prefer now and for, I'm glad my children are being raised in this time period than then. Um, but a lot of people, they want to go back to, you know, either when they were kids or when they were high schoolers to a time they felt like things were more innocent. And, and what they don't realize, it's not that the world has never been innocent, okay? Not in the sense that people talk about. It's their viewpoint of when they were innocent. And they, they want that back. And they think somehow it's about the environment rather than about them. And um, you have, that's why people will say have a child like mine because if you have a child like mine when you look out to the world and you want to help it and you want to you change the world, you're changing it from that perspective that all is good rather than all is bad. As you get older and you lose your innocence and some people it takes longer and some people it takes shorter and you, you, are, you are bombayed by these things that just cause so much um, stress and chaos within you and despair that you search for that place where it feels like it's going to be all better. But the problem becomes is that then when you vote these people in who are not aware of how they feel about the world um, and they want everything to be the way they want it to be, not the way that the, the voters want it to be. They don't listen to the voice of the people. They listen to an inner voice, which can be okay if the inner voice represents that of the people. <laughs> I, don't, I just think that sometimes it doesn't. I feel that a lot of um, the politicians, when they think about stuff, it's about what they want, and then they use the voice that people reflect that. Um, because I, I just can't imagine, for me, a world where, you know, things that are not available for those of us in trouble because we're going to be punished by those people that these things that we've done is bad, so therefore we'll be punished. An example of that would be abortion. Um, so I'm not pro-life in that aspect. It's, it's, for me, it's not that kind of a conversation. The conversation for me is that can this child live in the world that it will be coming into in a way that would be beneficial for that child? And if the parent who's, who's pregnant with a child cannot promise that, um, cannot take care of that child, and foresees that it will be more, more disastrous for the child, then abortion should be no matter what. That just should be the issue. I also believe that a woman has a right to their body, and they should also. I don't think there needs to be an excuse as to why you do it. I do believe it's it, you're killing something. It's alive. So, you know, whether it can live outside your body or not. My son and I, though, had this conversation. A liver is made up of organ, is an organism, but it's not alive. I mean, it is, but it's not. And so it's kind of that same thing. You can't take your liver out and put it on the ground and it will survive without you, nor can you survive without your liver, um, interesting enough. And that's how I see a fetus at that point. Um, so... I think as a woman, but even if I, by chance, was to think about it as a man, I think everyone should have the right to deal with their body as they wish. Um, if you're in, if, if you're going to say that, oh, that's wrong and it's destructive and it's murder and um, I don't say it's murder, but it is a death. But if you're going to say it's wrong and it shouldn't be done, then there's other things that people do to their body should also be wrong. Um, but I'm very black and white on that aspect because I think that if we stay black and white, if it's yes or it's no, then we have more clear-cut laws than all these laws that are very all mushy-mush. So I got kind of on a tangent there. Uh, but that's one of those things. Same thing with, 
being in jail. If you're going to go to prison, if you did it or you didn't do it, the court decides you did it, regardless of whether you did it or didn't do it, you're going to have to prove, keep proving that you did and didn't. But if you, if they decide you did it, then the punishment should absolutely fit the crime. So, um, I, I would hate to be in the same position, but if I killed somebody, and even if it was in self-defense, if they decide that I killed them because I was a mean, nasty, rotten person, then death is my responsibility for that. Or the, or it's you kill somebody no matter what, death is your punishment, then that's the, that is the consequence that you have to take for the action that you've done. Um, I know the world is not black and white, okay? I know that there are circumstances and reasons for the things that we do. The problem is, is that the people who will lie that they had circumstances and reasons for what they did. And then there are people who will tell the truth. And sometimes, no matter how much you've researched it, no matter how much you look at it, no matter how much you do, people will choose a person who lies because of something they like about that person and will ignore a person who tells the truth because there's something they don't like about that person. And that is not true justice. And there really isn't any way to get past that at this point in time. So one of the things I would do is figure out a way to invent a lie detector that gave us images in the person's brain and then that'd be it. But I'm sure people will figure out a way around that too. Anyway, so that's it. That's how I would do it. I'd be the goddess. Um, I would be a... I don't want to be in control of the government. Uh, I'd like to be part of the council, of course, but I wouldn't want to be the absolute last person to make the say of it. But if I was, the reason is because people wouldn't like me. I mean, they would like me even less if I was in control of everything because it's very much um, look it at it, weigh it, and then that's it. And they're just some things that, as much as we dislike them, they need to be done. Um, anyway, so that's it. You can make the comments down below. I won't hold it against you. You don't agree with me. I won't hold it against you. If you think I'm an idiot or crazy, none of that stuff's going to bother me. Just be nice about it. Um, we, we can be friends and still have great discussions and not believe the same things. Otherwise, the world would have died a long time ago and be, you know, because people would have blown each other up. All right. Have a great weekend, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Oh, by the way, my hearing is in four days, I think. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, five days. Um, by next Saturday, if I'm feeling good and I don't get severely depressed about it, I'll let you guys know what went on. Um, the next one's going to be about astrology. I thought it was this one, but it's the next one's going to be about astrology. And um, I'm hoping, pray, 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 that... Um, they give me a decision at the hearing and not tell me I have to wait two months to find out what's going on. Anyway, um, alright, that's it.